it is my privilege to welcome you to the Central Coast Local Health District Annual Memorial Service. My name is Brooke Ledbitter and I am the Nursing Unit Manager of the Palliative Care Unit at Gosford Hospital. This year has been challenging in ways that none of us could have foreseen. The normal patterns and routines of all our lives have changed and it has been difficult to maintain those human connections that do so much to enrich and sustain us. To lose someone during a time when large gatherings are restricted, thereby preventing the sharing of collective grief is a double blow. The local health district, like all of you, has had to embrace new technologies in order to enable this service to be possible. I'd like to hand over to Auntie E, local community elder, to give an acknowledgement of country. Hello everyone, what a beautiful day it is. I'm Elaine Chapman, I'm a proud Wiradjuri woman from Central Western New South Wales on my grandfather's side and on my mother's and grandmother's side I'm from the Arunda country round Alice Springs. It's a great pleasure to be here today to do the acknowledgement of country. Although I've lived on the Central Coast for since 1960, I still can only do an acknowledgement because this isn't my homeland. My homelands are out off in the Red, red Desert, out off Alice. So I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that this building is on, and also point out that although the building's on the land, it is still Aboriginal land, always will be, and still has the spirit of our Aboriginal ancestors walking on it daily as it, the ancestors guide us through. I'd also like to pay respect to the traditional owner's descendants. They are the future leaders of today. And I'd also like to acknowledge the custodians of this land that were appointed, and that's the Dark and Young Land Council. And I thank the Land Council for all the wonderful things that they do to try and protect our land. The land for Aboriginal people is Mother Earth. It is our essence. It is our being. As we walk on it, we talk to it. We acknowledge it and we love it. So as you walk on our land, even though there's concrete and buildings on it, you cannot remove our ancestors' land. So I ask you to walk on our land no matter where it is, with respect, and if you can, to acknowledge those people that have walked this over 60,000 years ago. Thank you. It is our hope that this memorial service gives an opportunity to take the time to remember, honour and reflect on the life of the person who has died. I would suggest that in order to view this service that you find a quiet place, somewhere that you find safe and comforting and give yourself the space that you need to remember. Remembering is an intensely personal time. If watching the service today is causing too much distress, be kind to yourself, take a break and choose another time to revisit the service when you are ready. Thank you. Hello to you wherever you are watching this as we join together in this memorial service. My name is Peter Wakeley and I'm the chaplain at Wyong Hospital, a role I've enjoyed and count a great privilege for more than 13 years. Today we all share something in common that knits us together, that makes us, as it were, one. We all share a story of grief and loss. Now, of course, every one of us has experienced loss in many different ways through our life. But today, we especially remember and honour the loss of a loved one who has passed away, who has died. As I speak for a few minutes, allow me to share a few brief personal stories and then make some reflections that I trust will be helpful to all of us. My dad, his name was Ron, was 92 when he died in a hospital in Sydney about two and a half years ago. Before that time, my dad certainly had some health issues and he was in aged care with my mum for many years. But for a 92 year old, well, he was doing okay. But suddenly things changed. 
for my dad and he was taken to hospital by ambulance. Maybe you can relate to that in some way with your own story of your loved one. My wife and I have been going down at night time to visit dad in the hospital. But then late one morning while I was at work, the doctor rang and said to me, Peter, I'm sorry, but things have changed quickly for your dad. And we think that palliative care is now the best option. Well, with my mum, we said yes to that because we knew that that was what dad wanted at this stage. He had an advanced care plan in place. As my wife and I drove to Sydney, I called my brothers in Queensland and they started the journey south. We picked up mum and went to the hospital and it was clear that dad was really struggling. However, we were fortunate to have some special times talking together with dad. Mum stayed that night with dad and the next morning when we arrived, well, dad was unconscious and the end was not far away. I imagine you know how precious and special that time is as we spend those final few moments, however long they may be, with the one that we love. Then this made so much harder in these COVID times. Later that day, my dad stopped breathing and he slipped quietly and gently into the presence of God. Now I knew in my head that that time was coming, that my dad was dying. I'd face death and loss before with other family members. But my heart broke and my tears came again and I hugged my dad and I said my goodbyes. I realised yet again in that sacred moment that death is so final. My brothers arrived later that day and with other family, we shared around dad's bed in that single room, some special family time and some deep reflections. And you can see the emotion still here with me. And again, you may identify with that. As I share my story and as you reflect on your own story of loss, I imagine there may well be types of emotions swirling around within us, all types of emotions. Deep pain and sadness, the loss of your loved one may have been quite recent or some time ago. There may be many other feelings as well of loneliness perhaps, maybe anger, how could they have left me? Maybe guilt over things left unsaid or relief that they are no longer suffering or emptiness, or a mixture of those emotions and perhaps a lot more. And I recognise that for some, the relationship with the one who has died may have been a tough one, a difficult one, perhaps even a painful one. So grief can get really complicated. As you know, even at the best of times, grief is messy. It's not a nice straight line from, well, starting grief to, well, Everything's fine now. No, <laughs> grief is often like a roller coaster, isn't it? Or a ball of string that a cat has played with and it's so messy. Every day, something can trigger a memory. A song, a scent, a perfume, a picture, a place, and bring with it a joy or a heartache or lots, lots more. As you know, a loss like this changes us. Let me share another brief personal story with you, which I've been given permission to share. A very good friend of mine called Bronwyn, who was only in her mid-50s, died of cancer earlier this year, 2021. Terribly sad, of course, and a huge loss to her husband, Rob, and their beautiful family, and many, many others as well. This family also suffered another very deep grief at the same time. A grandson within their family was born full term, but incredibly sadly, little Beaumont was still born. Wow, how do you help them in their intense suffering? How do we help ourselves in our own grief? Well, I know like I imagine you do, that when we are grieving, there are a number of things that we need. We need people who are available to us without pushing in. We need people who are supportive to us 
without having their own agendas. And we need people who are real and they grieve with us without telling us what we should be doing or what we should be feeling. And finally, we need people who are quiet and who listen without trying to fix us. We need that and we can be that for others because, well, we understand. My wife and I have tried to be that available, supportive, real and quiet listening person to Bron's husband, Rob, who is a good mate of ours. We don't always get it right, but we try and we learn. I hope that you have people around you that care for you in good and healthy ways. And please don't forget our palliative care service have counsellors. Plus, there are many others in our community that we can reach out to. As I begin to wrap up, let me share another brief story with you. Joe Bailey and his wife had three of their children die over the span of several years, an awful, awful loss. Many years ago, Joe wrote a book about this very painful experience called The Last Thing We Talk About. Let me read to you one of his reflections when one of their children died. He says, and I quote, I was sitting torn by grief. Someone came and talked to me of God's dealings, of why it happened, of hope beyond the grave. He talked constantly. He said things I knew were true. I was unmoved, except to wish he'd go away. He finally did. Later, another person came and sat beside me. He didn't talk. He didn't ask leading questions. He just sat beside me for an hour and more, listened when I said something, answered my questions briefly, prayed simply and left. I was moved. I was comforted. I hated to see him go. You may relate to that. I know that I do. We grieve and we can support others who grieve because we get it. We can be that available, supportive, real and quiet listening person. As you know, a good listener gives the gift of love. One author made this great observation when he said, when we honestly ask ourselves which person in our lives means the most to us, we often find that it is those who, instead of giving advice, solutions or cures, have chosen rather to share our pain and touch our wounds with a warm and a tender hand. That's so true, isn't it? As another writer said, love doesn't mean doing extraordinary or heroic things. It means knowing how to do the ordinary things with tenderness, with empathy and sensitivity. So my friends, may God's comfort, love and blessing be with you in your loss and grief. I hope you can receive that. And as I close, may we each continue to care for ourselves and for others as we keep going in our life with all its changes because we are resilient. As we listen to our own feelings of grief and express them healthily. As one very wise person said many years ago, blessed are they that mourn for they will be comforted. In other words, let's keep doing the hard work of mourning and grieving especially with others who care and support us, for comfort will come. Let's continue to honour the memory of our loved one who has died in our own special and unique ways. Let's continue to treasure life. And let's say the things that we need to say to those that we love and care for now, because, well, we know that life, while very precious, is also short and fragile. Thank you for listening and peace be with you. We're going to move now into a reflective activity to reflect and remember those who have died with a pouring of different elements into a glass vase, symbolising the life and the memory of someone we wish to remember and honour. We invite you to take this time to honour and remember the person that you have cared about. These elements signify your memories, all those thoughts and feelings of the person you cared about. Let this be a recognition of all that you shared, a tribute of life and love, 
in the face of our loss. You may wish to create your own symbol to honour the person that you have cared about and loved and now deeply miss. Thank you so much for watching. Hello everyone, my name is Anushka and I'm working as a palliative care advanced trainee at Gosford Hospital. I'd like to share some thoughts about grief and loss. You may have already heard or read words similar to what I'm about to say, but I hope that this gives us a moment to reflect on those we have lost. The death of a loved one and how we feel about it is a very personal experience. I'm sorry for your loss. I want to reassure you that feelings of sadness, anger and disbelief are okay. I want to reassure you that feelings of peace, understanding and relief are okay. There is no right or wrong way to experience this. Although it may feel impossible, let us care for ourselves, just as we cared for our loved one, so that we might allow ourselves the space to feel, to grieve and to remember. In spite of our grief, let us celebrate the life of our loved one. Let us treasure the precious memories we shared and let us remember them the way that they would have wanted us to. Thank you for choosing to view our memorial service. We hope that this has given you the opportunity to remember, honour and reflect. This service may have evoked some difficult emotions for you and in that you will not be alone. Sometimes loss can be overwhelming and there are organisations that can offer help during this difficult time. Here are some contact details for you.